Mully and Haw, Chicago Sports Radio 6-7 of the score. And on the line is Odyssey NFL insider Brian Baldinger. Insider calls presented by BetQL. Subscribe to BetQL today. Instantly get the model's best live bets, live public, sharp data, trends, so much more right at your fingertips. You can also hear Brian with Jason LaConfora on Baldy's Breakdowns. With new episodes out every week, just search Baldy on the Odyssey app or wherever you find your podcast. Brian, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing good, guys. Good to be with you. Well, I, you know, we just we've been talking a little bit about the Bears' offensive line, and it's become this kind of hot topic because the quarterback is getting hit so much. And I don't know if it's on the line, if it's on the quarterback, uh, what the uh, what the level of blame is. I would imagine there's uh, there's some issues on. On, on both him holding on to the ball and and them uh, blocking on different occasions. But when you when you think about quarterbacks like Justin Fields, uh, the fact that he's getting pressured on forty six percent of his dropbacks that that's unacceptable, right? Yeah, I mean, mobile quarterbacks tend to get sacked a lot because they move a lot and uh, they kind of sack themselves sometimes. That happens to Justin. But, I mean, I, you know, Lucas Patrick's not a secret. He's struggled in there against big guys, Dexter Lawrence. I mean, there's guys in there that he has struggled against Washington. Um, I don't know if it's his best position. Uh, you know, Tevin Jenkins is a, is a new guy. He's a big guy inside. Sometimes you got to just, you know, you got to drop your, uh, your center of gravity down to get underneath these guys. It's hard for a guy who's 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, sometimes. Borm is new in there, and Braxton is new in there. I mean, you got a lot of new faces. You know, you got to let these guys develop. But, yeah, I mean, I would say that in general, I mean, they haven't – they run the ball more than they throw it. So it's not like, you know, this is a pass-happy offense. But, um, you know, and the quarterback, you know, takes off and runs probably more than he needs to. But uh, that's all part of the growth. But, yes, I would say that up front they, uh, they need to play better. When you watch the Bears offense, Brian, and you see – Justin Fields struggling to complete the simple passes, whether it's because of a lack of protection or maybe the receivers aren't getting as open or maybe he's just missing. But when you watch the Bears offense, what do you come away thinking they need to do more of? Mm. Well, I mean, you know, they, they could they, they should have won the game on Thursday night. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, you know, Ryan Griffin, you have to make that throw. Justin knows it. I mean, he's it's a perfect throw. It's a perfect, I mean, it's a perfect play. Tight end delay. Ryan Griffin's in the end zone. He's got his hand up. I mean, he's got to make the play. Um, you know, I, I, every quarterback has to make that. I don't care who you are. So that's, that's a little irritating. But one thing that just irritated me from that game, I just got to get it off my chest, is – you go for a quarterback sneak in the middle of the field on third and one, and you get it. Get, you get two yards. Justin just plows through it. They run the exact same defense on the goal line on fourth and one, and you get stuffed giving it to Khalil Herbert. Like, why aren't you just running quarterback sneak there, period? Like, the Bears should never, ever, like the Eagles with Jalen Hurts, they should never, ever get stopped on third and one or fourth and one. I mean, it should be a quarterback sneak, unless it's way more than a yard, it's two yards. But when it was less than a yard, you have to make that. And if you make that, they're three and three. And you're like, all right, you know, we can, we got 11 days here to for the Patriots. Let's, so that's part of it. But I don't know, like, the offense makes sense to me. I think Luke is a good coordinator. I think he's played to their strengths. they got two good backs. Uh, the quarterback can run. There's quarterback runs in there. They got to get better in the passing game. Everybody knows that. And they got to get better up front. Brian, um, the, the Bears are kind of a little uncertain as to which quarterback will be starting. If, uh, if you had your say in that, would you go with uh, Mac Jones coming back from a high ankle sprain? Or do you think that, um, that you've seen enough from, uh, from Zappi, from, from Bailey Zappi to, to stick with him. And and is is there something going on beneath the surface here? There's been reports that that they're not overwhelmed with Jones and that he's uh he's an inquisitive mind and he's not just doing what Bill tells him to do and they're trying to send a little message to him too. Mm. Well, um, Bailey Zappi has played the last ten quarters for the Patriots. The best the offense has looked since Brady was there. Uh I don't yeah, I mean I maybe it's the opponents. The guy's completing 70% of his passes. Um, he's not making mistakes. 
Um, they're putting up big points, big numbers of points. The ball's getting to their wide receivers regularly. I mean, whether it's Tyquan Thornton or, you know, you pick a receiver. The ball's getting to the receivers, and he's making good decisions. So, I mean, I like Mac Jones personally, and I think Mac Jones can play in this league, but I, the offense looks a lot better right now with Bailey Zappi. It just does. And so – I don't know. Like I, I understand the you know the opponents make a difference, and so maybe that's part of it. But it sure looks like the offense uh, had a lot of jump to it the last two weeks. Brian, you mentioned Jalen Hurts, and obviously here in Chicago, we're kind of clinging to this idea that a year ago Jalen Hurts wasn't as polished as he is right now. And boy, he developed once they gave him. You know, the offensive line is very good. They got some weapons for him, and now look at him. Can Justin Fields make that same type of jump? Do you see the, the, the potential in him that he can be to Chicago what Jalen Hurts is to Philadelphia? Well, I, I, I know Jalen a lot better. I don't know Justin Fields. Um, I don't know how he's wired. I know how Jalen is wired. Um, that guy, there's nothing that's going to stop that guy from wanting to be great. I mean, his dad was a high school coach, coached by his dad in, you know, down in Houston, Texas. Um, this guy is just, I mean, his commitment to the game and to being great is unparalleled. It's as good as anybody in the business. Um, so that, that's how he is. Now, they got A.J. Brown. It's made a big difference. The guy is a stud. Um, they have as good an offense line as there is in football. That helps. And they're very well coached. So, and they, they never get very far away from a commitment, a real commitment to running the football. And that helps. So, you know, you can't get that guy to make a mistake right now. Now, can Justin do those things? I don't know if he's made like Jalen is, like just way he's wired, like work habits, um, just the expectations, um, how he leads from the locker room to the field, to the practice field, to the game field. Like I don't know those things about Justin. I know those things about Jalen. But if he has those things, then there's no reason why we can't see a jump the way we've seen Jalen jump. Um, when we think about uh, offensive linemen and building an offensive line in particular, how much do you value high draft picks as opposed to you – know, I mean, it seems like the Bears, for instance, mm -hmm. drafted, drafted four linemen this year but in the bottom 100, not in the top 100. And, and that doesn't mean you can't succeed with those guys, but it just means it's more unlikely to hit on all of them than you would if you were drafting in the first 100. Is that fair? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so, like, if you look at two teams that have rebuilt their offensive lines in the last two years, the Chiefs rebuilt theirs. They went out and drafted Creed Humphrey in the second round and Trey Smith in the sixth round, and they hit on both. They're studs. Um, Seattle this year, their offense is, is rolling. They drafted Charles Cross in the first round out of Mississippi State, and they drafted Abe Lucas out of Washington State in the third round. And those guys haven't missed a down, and they're really good players. You know, so, you know, if you look at the Eagles, they drafted Jordan Malata. You know, he was a kid that never played football in the seventh round. He's as good as any left tackle in football. Like, you have to draft, you, you got to draft the right guy, and then you got to coach him right. And so the offensive line coach, to me, outside of your head coach uh, and your coordinators, the most important coach on your staff is your offensive line coach and how he develops them. And so that's a huge part of it. And, Sometimes it doesn't matter. I mean, up in Buffalo, Ryan Bates was uh, – I don't think he was even drafted, you know, out of Penn State. But he's the right guard in Buffalo. Aaron Cromer's done a great job with him. Um, you got to draft the right guys. It's not the number of guys. It's the right guys, and then you got to coach them up really hard. Maybe Braxton Jones can be that guy at left tackle. Like, I'm not convinced yet. It's still early. But, you know, he's, he, he shows moments that he can, he can hold that position down. Tevin Jenkins was a right tackle, left tackle at Oklahoma State. They've got him at right guard, which is a new position for him. But I know he's a tough guy. You know, let's just see. Like, six weeks isn't enough. But um, – and I think, you know, going back to the days of Olin Krutz and some guys you've had there, like your center position might be the most – and going back to Hilgenberg, you know, right. you've got to get you got to get that position fixed. And I'm saying Sam isn't the guy, but you, that position has to be – that you've got to have a smart guy and a tough guy and an athletic guy in there. Um, and that, that really helps your offense and your offensive line. Great stuff, Brian, as always. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, Brian. Yep, my pleasure, guys. You bet. Have a great day. Thanks.